The audio digital to analog converter module is a 16-bit Delta Sigma signal converter designed for audio applications. The DAC provides two output channels, left and right channel, to support stereo applications. Data input is in the form of a 16-bit digital value from the application program via the DMA module or the DAC data and control registers. Data output is in an analog voltage which is proportional to the digital input value. Most devices provide three voltage outputs, positive, negative, and the midpoint. The positive and negative outputs are differential about a midpoint voltage of approximately 1.65 volts with a voltage swing of approximately plus or minus one volt. The midpoint output is an offset voltage level that represents the midpoint of the output voltage range. Some key features of the DAC are 16-bit resolution, 256 time oversampling rate, 100 kilosamples per second maximum sampling rate, and a forward deep input buffer. Now let's take a look at an ideal DAC operation. The red arrows represent the DAC data input which is in the form of a 16-bit digital value that varies over a period of time and the blue waveform represents the upsample data output which is an analog voltage that is proportional to the input value. Let's take a look at the DAC block diagram. Each channel has its own forward deep FIFO and its own D to A converter. Each DAC channel has three voltage outputs and as stated previously, not all devices have the midpoint voltage. Those channels are left and right positive, left and right negative, and the left and right midpoint. Data will be read from the FIFO every 256 DAC clock cycles and if the FIFO becomes empty, for example, if the DMA module or processor cannot provide data in a timely manner, the DAC accepts alternate data from the DAC default data register. This register provides a default input value that represents a safe output voltage, which is often the midpoint value or a zero value. Now let's take a closer look at the D to A process. First, the digital interpolation filter upsamples the input signal to create additional interpolated data points. The oversampling ratio is 256 to 1, or 256 times the incoming sampling rate. For example, a 100 kilosamples per second input signal, which is the maximum sampling rate, produces 25.6 million data points per second. The interpolation filter also eliminates unwanted noise produced by the upsampling process. Next, the output of the interpolation filter drives the sigma delta modulator, which converts the word output from the interpolation filter into a serial bit stream. And lastly, that bit stream from the modulator is processed by the reconstruction filter to convert the bit stream to an analog signal. It then performs a low pass filter to yield the desired voltage levels. The reconstruction filter produces two differential voltage outputs and a midpoint reference. The positive, the voltage level representing the output signal, negative, which is a complement of the positive output signal, and the midpoint is the offset voltage level representing the midpoint of the output voltage range. The differential outputs from the reconstruction filter are amplified by analog amplifiers to provide the required 2 volts peak to peak voltage swing into a 1 kilo ohm load. The DAC accepts data in two formats, signed and unsigned integers. An unsigned 16 bit value can range from 0 hex to FFFF hex, with 0 being the absolute minimum and all Fs being the most positive value. A signed 16-bit value will range from 8,000 hex to 7 FFF hex, where 7 FFF hex is the most positive value. 0 hex will represent the midpoint value, and FFFF hex is a value just below the midpoint. The form bit in the DAC control register is where the user can select between signed and unsigned data input. Now let's take a look at how to select and configure the DAC reference clock. The DAC clock can be generated from either the primary oscillator, the auxiliary oscillator, or can even be generated from the internal FRC with PLL. The auxiliary oscillator is tied to the secondary oscillator pins on the device and allows the DAC clock to operate separately from the system clock. 
the auxiliary oscillator mode bits and the auxiliary clock control register select the oscillator mode for the auxiliary oscillator the clock output divider bits and the auxiliary clock control register allow any of the DAC reference clocks to be divided by any one of the predetermined postscalar settings the DAC module itself also has a clock divider that can be used to scale the input clock to an exact input frequency. When all is said and done, the DAC clock must be equal to the sampling rate frequency times 256. Now let's take a look at a quick example. Suppose the sample rate we want to achieve is 100 kilosamples per second. This would mean that the required DAC clock must be equal to 100 kilosamples per second times 256. So to obtain the 25.6 MHz clock, we will select an external crystal for the auxiliary oscillator of the same frequency. Since we have the exact oscillator frequency, all postscalars will be set to a divide by 1. Interrupts and status. The audio DAC provides two interrupts, one for each channel. Depending on the setting of the interrupt configuration bits, LI type for the left channel and RA type for the right channel, in the DAC status register, the DAC interrupt is triggered by either a FIFO empty or a FIFO not full condition. A FIFO empty interrupt can be used with the audio DAC to maximize throughput while minimizing the impact of interrupts on the CPU. The FIFO empty interrupt is the simplest and preferred interrupt method for the use with DMA. The FIFO not full interrupt is used in an application without DMA to minimize the occurrence of DAC underrun. This interrupt can also be used with DMA, but additional software support is required. Each channel also has two status bits that can be read to indicate the status of the FIFO. The right channel full and the left channel full. Bits in the DAC stat register indicate that the FIFO is full. The right channel empty and the left channel empty bits in the DAC stat register indicate that the FIFO is empty. Let us now look into how the DAC module interacts with the CPU. When the DAC module is enabled, the FIFO is empty, so DAC interrupts are generated for both channels. The DAC default value is to be processed by the D to A. As the default value is being processed, the CPU handles the interrupt and data will be transferred to the DAC data registers. After 256 DAC clock cycles, data will be read from the FIFOs and will begin being processed by the D to A. Once data is transferred from the FIFO, another DAC interrupt is generated and the CPU will again process the interrupt and transfer new data into the DAC data registers. This process continues until the DAC module is shut down or if the device is put into sleep mode. Now let's use the DAC module with the DMA controller. When the DAC module is enabled, the FIFO is initially empty and DAC interrupts are generated for both channels. Since the FIFOs are empty, the DDA will read data from the DAC default register. The DMA controller acknowledges the interrupt request from the DAC and will transfer data from DMA memory to the DAC data registers. Since the DMA controller shares the data bus and can only transfer one word at a time, DMA channel 0 will be the first to transfer data from DMA memory to the DAC data register, followed by DMA channel 1. After 256 DAC clock cycles, the D to A will read data from the FIFOs, causing the FIFO to become empty and another DAC interrupt to be generated. The DMA controller will now transfer the second set of data from DMA memory. This process will continue until the DAC is disabled or if the device is put into sleep mode. For more information on the DMA controller, please visit Microchip's Direct Memory Access DMA Family Reference Manual. This circuit shows a typical configuration for connecting speakers to the DAC module. This example uses differential outputs of the DAC and produces a single-ended output using op-amp based amplifiers. The corresponding output is two times the positive input.